Hey everybody, in this one we are doing another video that I filmed at the beginning of the spring and never got around to editing. And in this one we're doing some fossil hunting. So the first spot we go to, we are finding these, which are belemnites, which are very cool fossils. You can see the they actually formed a crystal pocket on the inside of this one. I have one that's a literal geode, and they're very, very cool. And then after that, we go to a spot and find some of these, which are Griffia oyster fossils, also known as devil's toenails. So I hope you enjoy, and yeah. Ah, uh, it's really, really pretty. All right, onward. You can see the cliff face I'm going to. Ooh, what's this? Hey, right off the bat, there's a little oyster. Hey, here's another, another. It's a devil's toenail. Always, always, always check this as I'm walking up to the actual spot because there's always stuff in here. I'll show you specifically what we're looking for though Ow. when we get up there. What? Oh, I just tried to grab one of the branches, but the field thorns. Oh my gosh. Ow. Yeah, thorns. Ow. <laughs> Michelle. Yes. All right. So. See if we can find one really quick. Is this a piece of a broken one? It is a piece of a broken one. I'm not going to show it because, yeah. I'd rather show a whole one first. Ah. And here it is. We are looking for belemnites, which are actually squids. They are hard shelled Jurassic squids. And they are awesome. So there's a nice one there. You see my footprints from the last time I was trying to. I know. <laughs> you can see all these footprints from last year. Those were from us. Because I come here about once, twice a year. And it's such a loose hill that it's about how long it takes for the rain and weather to bring them all back down for us. Let's see if we can find some more. Oh, hey, there's a good section of one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's a section, there's a section. The ones we want are the ones that have points. Oh gosh, I'm sliding. There's also really cool scallop fossils in this area. Hey, there's one with a point. What are you? Looks like a piece of shell. You can see the ridges. Yeah, if you look in these this wall right here. Well, of course, there's none immediately in front of me, but where's a good? Oh gosh! As I fall. Ooh! Ah, oh, okay. I'm zooming in on this. Do you see these right here? These stars sticking out. Those are sections of crinoid stems. And crinoids are really cool, also known as sea lilies. So I'm probably going to have to put the camera away for a minute so I can get those out safely. Because those are very cool. Very cool. Alright, they're all in those cliffs on the flat faces. And there's a slope of extremely loose dirt all the way down. It's not like it's a raging river that could take me away, but I still don't want to get wet, so... I'm going to ask my beautiful assistant to help me out on this one. Okay, so we are watching Theo up on this slope right here. He is digging for... I think the lemonade. Uh, potentially clams. He did find a big one earlier. It was quite shattered. So he couldn't collect it, but definitely blemnites. Blemnites, excuse me, from this location. Gonna pan off to the side here really quick, show you the creek. 
There's the creek behind the tree. More of the creek. And from both of us, I just want to say thank you guys for your support, your subscribes, your likes, your follows. Um, any of you that share it for us uh, through social media, it, it really does help. Um, I know it's a little channel, but it's growing every week. And he is extremely passionate about this, and I'm happy that he gets to share it with other people. He's always wanted to show other people besides just me. Um, and this way, he gets to. So while Theo goes and looks around, I knit. And so this is the little tiny circle I found myself. I'm not a very big human. Don't take up much space. And right now, I'll show you what I'm knitting. Oh, he's going to love this part of the video. I'm knitting a sock. I'm currently knitting a sock, so this is the heel of it. And then I'm making the foot. It looks kind of weird right now. But uh, I'm making the foot and just about to work on the toe. So thought you guys would like to see that. All right, I've made it back from my terrifying voyage. Filled the backpack up with stuff, so that's nice. I just wanted to show why I'm going over there. Here, if I put my hand right. Oh, hey, a toenail. Okay, so I can't even imagine how loud this was when it happened. Look at that giant, giant boulder. Well, it's huge. When you walk up around it, you can really just get an idea of how massive it is. Enormous. And you can literally see exactly where it came out. I'd call that a successful day. Ooh, what is this? Hey, sand. Found a bunch of the lemnites like I wanted. Found a bunch of Griffia fossils. I found two clams. A handful, actually a good amount of oysters. And one scallop that is super cool. I'm sorry if I'm wobbling right now. I'm trying to <laughs> search on my way out because the moment we hit the end of this hill, that deposit ends. Hello. All right, my turn. I usually do this with at least one hand free. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh man, I almost went in there. Ah, there we go. Alright, so... We're still in the Priors, different area. Near an area called Red Dome. And this is in the heart of a Jurassic marine fossil exposure. So we're gonna walk up here a little ways. I got ahead of myself and started collecting before I, you know, realized, hey, I should probably be recording. But yeah, here are some examples. She's moving the car up as we speak. Here's a good cluster right here. You can see them. There's a bunch of them in there. These are Griffia oyster fossils. Also referred two in these parts as devil's toenails and if you just start oh there's one right there if you start just searching the hillside the heavy rain and snow melt knocks down new gravel so it pretty much gets recycled year after year as new stuff is eroding out there's another one but yeah, I just wanted to show that really quick. Oh, there's one sticking out. Yeah, they're very cool. And they are pretty much all over this hillside. This is a good cut into the exposure. Really pretty. If you look off in the distance, you can see Red Dome over there. Well, part of it. Yeah, really pretty. I would record the whole process of searching for them, but of course I forgot my other battery and my camera's about to die. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to keep this one pretty short, but I will definitely lay everything I find out. Whoa, those are some big ones. <laughs> oh, it has both halves even. That is a nice one. And laying right next to it is another nice one. 
Sweet. Here, I'll zoom in on one so you can see it better. See, they're very interesting looking. And that curved upper half is the top shell, and then that bottom is the trap door. But if I pull another one out, they usually lose their trap door. So finding not only a big one, but one that still has its trap door is kind of hard to do, actually. But yeah, I'm gonna get back to searching. I will show you all of what I find when we get back to the shop. All right, so here is the pile of oysters we wound up with. <laughs> Ignore the tumbler in the background. Um, if you look, they have a shell of the soil which basically forms into clay over them. And it is absurdly hard to get that off you try with just soap and water it'll it won't happen <laughs> I mean, you can leave these things soaking in warm soapy water for well over a week and there will be pretty much no change there is however one way to clean them up really easily and that's because of what is um, kind of composing chemically the uh, the sand that is coating them so the layer over top of them, that sand, is comprised mainly of calcite, aragonite, and gypsum, all of which react to acid. I mean, you can actually literally dissolve all three of those things. Actually, here, I have an example. Here is a gypsum crystal that I found while we were looking. And all three of those actually dissolve entirely, and something is mild as vinegar so uh, but I, it takes about you know a week or two to actually completely do it so to speed along the process you can actually treat these the same way that I treat my shells and dip them in the muriatic acid and that cleans them up remarkably fast and remarkably well and these conglomerates I'll show in a minute, but <laughs> that's the only way to do these things. They look incredible afterward. All right, I'm gonna use this one as my example. You can see it's pretty much uniform in its color right now, but it is gonna change the moment I dip it. So here it is, dip it in. Out, rinse it. And look at that now. <laughs> and when I'm dipping shells, I usually go five second intervals, but when I'm dipping these, they need a little longer usually, so I usually go about 10 second intervals. Yeah, again, they just look completely unrecognizable. <laughs> Alright, and this is a good example of why I love dipping these so much because you can see again I can't get a great shot of it right here but all of those rays in the shell that natural luster I did not polish this at all and it is not wet it is bone dry so the fact that it returns it to such a naturally high luster is just awesome <laughs> And again, you will never get this from soap and water. With these ones, you almost have to use the acid. Which is actually a lot safer with these ones because the, the fossil themselves, um, they agonize. So the agate will not be touched by the acid, but all the stuff on top of the fossil will go and uh, be dissolved by the acid. So, And here's that conglomerate that I used as an example. and. As you can see, there's really no comparison. Those fossils stand out like crazy now. They just look so good. <laughs> Alright, back to it. Alright, so this half was not treated and this half was treated. And the lighting isn't the best, but you can really see the difference. Here, I'll get some close-up. 
Here's one that was not. And here's one that was. You can really see how much shine and texture comes back. With all of those little ridges up at the point. They are just, here's one of the conglomerates before it got dipped. And here is one after it got dipped. You can see that there's no comparison. I mean, the fossils just stand out so much more on this one. It's incredible. <laughs> and same thing there. They've all got good texture and high gloss. Very cool. Well, here's what we wound up with yesterday. These are all crinoids in the matrix still. This pile right here is all oysters. These are all griffia. And these are all belemnites. Oh, and these are crinoids. Well, crinoid stems to be specific. I wanted to point this one out specifically. Very cool little oyster fossil that is attached to a vein of calcite. Bright yellow and bright dark brown calcite crystals. And you flip it over, and there's a perfect little turtella shell in there. One awesome fossil. <laughs> Alrighty, well that is going to do it for this one. Probably be back to actual <laughs> currently recorded videos next week. But yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll have another one out soon. You can follow me on social media, which links will be in description. And yeah.